Hello friends and welcome to my crafty space where I share my memory keeping projects and processes with all of you. If this is your first time here, then hello and welcome. My name is Crystal and I am super excited that you are here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos and any of the products or links that I mention in this video, I will put in that description box down below. So today I am pulling back out my Allie Edwards Digital Stories by the Month kit. If you guys couldn't tell, I loved this kit this month like the colors and the patterns I just as soon as she put it out there I was totally in love so today I am working on um a new a new traveler's notebook um project so this is a traveler's notebook that I received from my friend Michelle over at the stamp spot and it is an a pocket page notebook so if you have never heard of this before what it is, is a book that has like, it's like a traveler's notebook. Um, what do I want to say? Like a, like, co it's not copy paper, but it's like regular white paper. And then interspersed in between each of the layers is a pocket page. So it's like a, you know, like white paper, pocket page, white paper, pocket page, and so on throughout the entire book. I have been dying to try one of these out. Um, I've seen lots of videos done by Diane over at Dearly D. Uh, I will link some of her videos down below so you guys can see how she uses this same notebook because she's like amazing. Like her stuff is amazing. Um, anyway, ever since I saw her using it, I have been dying to try this. So Michelle sent this to me and I am just super pumped. So I've decided to take this notebook and turn it into a notebook that's all about me. I do have some projects here and there that are like family stories, which include stories about me too. They're just kind of like all of the stories in there. This one, I want to be just about me and uh, about me like right now. So what I did is I pulled some of the products from the um, digital kit. I've got this right here, which this was a journaling card that I recolored to match the like floral pattern. And then I typed out my journaling on the computer. So this is all pre-printed. Then I printed out two sections, one that I'm gonna put at the top, one that I'm gonna put at the bottom, just to give it a little bit more color and interest. Um, and that will be one of the pages. I'm thinking probably this page right here will be that. Then I printed out a picture of myself on vellum. So it's my first time I ever printed a picture on vellum. And my plan is to put this down inside the pocket page so that when you look through it, you'll still be able to see that there's stuff behind. But then you have this cool picture in between. Um, and then for this side, I wanted to take the, on the digital kit, there are these triangles, um, like triangle chipboard pieces. And I wanted to use them to create a patchwork page. So I recolored the teal hearts to be yellow hearts and I printed out, let me move all this. I printed out um, like, I made it like patchwork, right? So I put the two triangles back to back um, and made it look almost like a quilt. And then I printed out some pictures of outside because this spread is all about like ob observing outside um, in the coming spring. And I made them big enough to fit in these squares. So these will go throughout the spread and fill in the rest of this, you know, quote unquote quilt. So my plan is to actually cut these all out and put them onto, I wanna distress the edges just a little bit and put them onto a different page um, here and then to sew them down. So it's going to be, this is going to be a little bit of a process to get it all done, so I will speed you guys up. I will try to video some of the stitching stuff We'll see how that goes because I know I get a lot of questions about how to sew 
um, for projects like this. So I will try to get some of that filmed for you guys. And then we're just going to go from there and get this thing put together. So once it's done, I'll slow you guys down and we will close you out. But let's go ahead and get to work on this project. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here before I get to work on either side of the pages is to trim just a little bit extra off the side of my vellum photo. I just wanted it to slide down in that pocket really easy, and so I decided to take a tiny bit extra off the side. So it's probably more like 4 inches wide by 8, 8.25 tall. Um, I don't know, it just made it so it, it didn't buckle or anything in there since the vellum is a little thinner. Then I will pull over my other pages to get started working on those. So this one, to make trimming everything out easier, I just trimmed this into the three strips. And then from there, I can fussy cut out the triangles and the squares. Before I get to fussy cutting, though, I wanted to go ahead and get these attached. Now, I want to also sew around the edges of both of these pieces. I just want there to be a lot of texture on these pages. So when I put the adhesive down, I'm just keeping it in the very middle so that when I sew, I'm not going to be sewing through the adhesive, or at least my chances of, of sewing through adhesive are going to be much less. So I'm getting those on there, and then now let's get to work on the patchwork side. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do the first row of these, and then after that we'll, we'll skip around, and a lot of this was really repetitive, so you know, you don't have to, I don't want you guys to have to sit and watch me do every single piece here. So I trimmed out the triangle there, which I'm going to do this square next. And then to distress the sides, I'm just going to open up my scissors and rub it up and down the edge of the paper. I don't have any of the distressing tools. Um, there are some. I think Tim Holtz has one that's really nice, but it's okay. I just used a sharp pair of scissors and it worked out just fine. So I'm going to get the three pieces cut out and distressed, and then I will add adhesive again into just the middle most part of each piece and adhere those down. Again, I know I want to stitch around the outside of these, so it just makes a lot more sense to, um, to not go crazy on my adhesive since, you know, the stitching is what's going to hold it down. So what I did is I lined up the two edges and then I adhered down the middle part first and then the two sides. So when I go to the next rows, I will do the sides first and then the middles. And it is kind of lucky to have the um, the squares not totally covered in adhesive because it allows you to easily pick them back up and adjust if you need to. So because I distress the sides of all of those things, you'll notice that there's a little bit more white space than there was on the page. And I don't mind that at all. Um, you'll especially see it when I start to put the pictures in it. So I cleared off my desk and I pulled over my sewing machine. I use a Viking sewing machine. I actually um, worked with my mom uh, for a number of years and we sewed or sewed. That is not Sue. No, sewed. <laughs> Why does that sound so weird to say? Anyway, we made, we created um, children's clothes. So I actually have a lot of experience in sewing fabric and clothing um, and that sort of thing. So when I first saw that scrapbookers used sewing machines for paper, like my mind was blown and it almost makes me nervous sometimes to sew on paper. I just make sure my needle is not the same needle I would use on fabric. I also will say that it is so different to sew on paper as a medium than it is to sew on fabric. Fabric is much um, grippier, like it's easier to um, maneuver and manipulate whereas paper it seems like it slips through really quick so my advice is to number one make sure that you start with your needle down like mine you have to push a button in order to make the needle go down and stay down and that just helps you to position your 
um, paper better. Like if it's down, you can lift up the presser foot and adjust your paper. And also uh, to go slow, that that's probably the best thing you can do to help you create straighter lines. Um, okay, so I went ahead and I adhered down all of the squares, all of the photos, and there you can see that it's a little, there's a little bit more white space, but honestly, I think that's, I think that's okay. It's almost like, um, like there's binding strips in between, uh, if we're going for a quilt look here. And then I, um, I also trimmed off all of the strings, probably from, Again, my experience making clothes, it's just really hard for me to leave strings. <laughs> it just feels unfinished if there's strings hanging out. Um, then I pulled over my scrapbook.com uh, score tape, and that's what I chose to adhere this down with. It's I really like my score tape for projects like this because I feel like it's got a really strong hold, and especially when there's a lot of texture on the back with threads and all of that it just I felt more comfortable that it would hold it down better than my roller tape okay so I'm going to go ahead and adhere down those two pages and then the last thing I will do is go through my puffy heart stickers and to pick some out to spread around these pages while I do that let me go ahead and read this journaling before we get to the end so my journaling says when this time of year arrives I am so ready for the seasons to start changing since our state is surrounded by the Great Lakes, the winter means that we will have months and months of gray skies and cold weather. How I missed the blue and green. This week we are finally seeing peaks of the sun and I can feel my spirits rising. This weekend we are projected to be in the low 60s and I can hardly believe it. The sun and warmth make me feel more alive and inspired to go outside and look for the signs of life. These photos are from just that a nature walk around the house, looking for the little signs that the seasons are changing. I found my rhubarb plant beginning to break through the ground with its red stalks. I found ducks swimming around in the pond behind our house. I found the leaves of last year's strawberry plants ma marking the spots where new berries will grow. I found tiny buds starting to form on the trees around the house. I found signs of spring and I am so excited. So that's my journaling. That was from the 5th of March, so just last week, and uh, that will do it. So let's go ahead and slow you guys back down. All right, you guys, so this was really fun. I super enjoyed playing around in this notebook, and I'm looking forward to filling all of these pages with spreads about me. Um, I hope that you guys feel inspired to pull out your digital kits and try something a little different with them. You know, um, this was not super hard to do, but there's so much texture in it and it's just awesome um, on the page. It just, you guys, it feels so, it looks so good. I love it. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys feel inspired. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and let me know what you guys are looking forward to with the spring. I know that there is a lot of uh, craziness going on in the world right now, but, you know, spring is right around the corner and the warm weather, warm temperatures, and at least we can be grateful that we can get outside here in the U.S. I know in other countries it's different because the seasons are different, but anyway. So let me know what is something that has you feeling good and excited about the spring and that will do it. So until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye now.